The Humboldt Student Food Collective. What the heck is that? I don't know. That's what I've been uh, assigned to do by a girl named Alicia Powell so that I can get an A from uh, this guy. And yeah, I finished shooting with this guy. But now I'm still wondering the same question. It seems to me that the Humboldt Food Collective is a gathering of like-minded people to, being, to bring a big idea, you know, to a green campus like Humboldt. So, this is what I've collected about the Humboldt State Food Collective. <laughs> Right there. As students and whatever you're else doing next, you know, you're part of whatever that next step will be more than than people might. <laughs> Roger. I was one of the original founding members of the Humble Student Food Collective. You know, I was just, I was a CCAT employee at the time, or maybe a volunteer, I don't remember which exactly. But I was checking my email one day and there was this random message from this man and group I've never heard of, talking about wanting to build food properties all over the, all over the country. And I thought, that'd be a cool idea. Um, I didn't really think it was serious, but I thought, you know, why not give it a shot? And it was just me at that point. So I started going to my classes and just giving like impromptu five minute announcements at the beginning of class saying, look, there's this nationwide movement that I think we should hop on. And um, I got maybe four or five people interested enough. And we had a few meetings. We decided to go as a group down to the co-fed retreat. Um, that was in Sebastopol. And we just had a little mentorship gathering, essentially saying, this is what the plan is. Um, we're all just starting, but with your help, we can actually make it happen. And then we came back and we kept working on it for the next few months, making very, very, very slow progress. Um, it was more a series of feel-good gestures in the actual, in the actual work. But it got, it got us motivated enough to keep recruiting other members. And from there, we found Eric, Alicia, uh, Terry, and Diana, other people involved in the group. And um, over the next few years, they would build it up into something much bigger. Cool. Thank yeah. you, Roger. Thank you. So, uh, what was your name again? Sort of the J? Julia. My name is Julia Clark, and I <laughs> just started here at HSU, and I got involved in the Student Food Collective right away. Um, I have some friends involved in it. Um, I pretty much fell into the role of facilitating our meetings, um, taking notes, and making sure that everyone's keeping on track. When I first got to the collective, everything was really scattered and everyone had great ideas, but it just needed some focus, so that's pretty much my role in the collective. I think the first meeting I ever went to, I went and I wasn't really sure what to expect, so I came, I was just going to be quiet and listen, and I was hearing all of these ideas sparking around, like everyone had some brilliant plan, and it was like someone would say something and I'd go to respond, and then someone else would say exactly what I was going to say, and I was just so happy to be surrounded by people who had the same vision and ideas that I did. Um, it was just so inspiring to see all these really cool people. So eventually it was very clear that the Humboldt State Food Collective was very intimately tied with the Sea Cat. So we went down there and collected a few people who could fill us in more on what this was becoming. I'm Jake and I've been a participant in several of the events that the Food Collective has hosted. I think that, like, especially as a student living on campus, um, there's, I mean, right now you have to make a pretty significant effort um, to try and uh, know where your food is coming from or, you know, eat uh, local food. Um, and I think the Food Collective Kind of making an effort to make it easier for students to get involved in 
in their food is, is, uh, is totally awesome. I'm Victor and I participate by helping out um, the Hems meeting and I help them with um, sort of coordinating um, the events and um, participating also in the events which are really great. I got involved um, around December last year. Uh, I'm not a CR, I'm a CR student but uh, since I've been coming my friend introduced me with um, CCAT and since then I just felt with in love with the whole environment and the environmental impact that China establishes. Like I, that's something I really want to be part of and continue. Uh, my name is Jacob Ferdman, and I am currently one of the co-directors at the Campus Center for Appropriate Technology, and I've uh, been involved in. Um, various ways with the Food Collective for the past couple of years. Um, the concept of the Student Food Collective is not to create a, a conventional business model. The conventional business model that the university uses, right? Um, instead, what they're trying to do is create something that is more of a cooperative, that's more um, horizontally run. The main priority of the food truck is to get really good food, real food, to students. That's the highest priority. Money is not the highest priority. Money is essential in making things run because that's the, that's the society that we live in, but the primary objective is to get really good food from local farmers into the bellies of students so that they can expand their minds. My name is Eric Recchia. Uh, I'm one of the members of the Humble Student Food Collective. Uh, I've done a lot of work with them over the last few years. Different things like business planning and financials, uh, also doing organizing and helping out with different events. Um, one of the organizations that we're really modeling ourselves after um, because they've proven to be very successful using this sort of student-based cooperative business model is the Flame and Egg Plant in Olympia, Washington at uh, Evergreen State College. And they've been operating successfully since 2007, uh, completely in the model that we're looking at. They had four key members leave in one year, and you know, just because people were really cross-trained, because they had planned ahead to create institutional sustainability in their organization, it really went pretty easily. So one of the things that we're going to be very about is education. You know, we're going to be, here's your farmer, here's who we bought it from, here's how they grow it, here's why you should support it. And then, you know, making it, like I said, available to people at the same time too, not just like making it some really high thing that is some idealized standard that's not really available to people. So educating them about the differences and making it available. Um, I don't expect everybody on campus to really commit to, to eating this sort of food system and we won't have the capacity for it anyway. And so really originally we're going to be geared towards a specific group of the campus community that's interested in supporting this type of business, but at the same time with that eye on education to try to create change institutionally, to, to show the university food system this is the way that they can be more sustainable too and to show that there's a demand for it from the students at the same time. So I've been coming back to the CCAT for a couple days and I had just one interview left when out of nowhere the drum circle came. My name is Rachel Hadou and I am a student um, at HSU. I've been going to HSU on and off now for a few years um, and uh, my major is ecological restoration with a minor in botany. I have um, collaborated with the rest of the group in getting a successful work trade operation going between um, farms and one farm in particular, Wild Rose Farm, the one I work on, and um, and students. And we've had we had 30 students come to the farm uh, about a month ago to harvest quinoa, and um, it was it was beautiful because people were involved with their food and seeing where it was growing. And not many people actually get to harvest their own food. People got to harvest the quinoa 
and then harvest food for themselves around the farm, cilantro and spinach and uh, there were tomatoes and kale and chard and it was really beautiful because people got so excited about, about where their food was coming from. So at this point, what the Humboldt Student Food Collective was striving to become was relatively clear. There was only a few pieces missing and I thought I could find them at the farmer's market. <laughs> Alright, hi, I'm Mike Egan with Mycality Mushrooms. And uh, here at the Arcata Farmers Market, selling my uh, products. So why did you get involved with the whole food collective? Well, they approached me as, you know, it just a, seems like a good idea as far as supplying local products with local people. What are some of the challenges of selling uh, such Well, mushrooms are uh, perishability is always a, an issue for me. You know, I mean. Being a, a local product that you get, um, you know, in some of my varieties, I get four or five days before they start to spoil. You know, so like my lion's mane and, and some of the other more exotic species I do, they don't have a long shelf life. So that's always a challenge, is you know, reaching your market. You know, it's uh, it's hard to get a product out of the area that's extremely perishable and being economical about it too, you know, you got to be competitive on the whole world wholesale market, you know. Uh, hi, my name is Alicia Powell and I'm a senior at Humboldt State University, anthropology and pre-med major. What are some of the challenges that will come with running a business um, devoted to being completely organic? Well, one of the I think less of a challenge is, is it being a completely organic business, more is we are really focused on keeping as much of it local as possible and it's really not going to be feasible for it to be 100% local, at least at this point in time, because we have a, you know, a growing season here that with our different microclimates, there are certain things that we just aren't going to be able to have here that people are going to want. You know, we're in California and we want avocados we just can't get them local. Or different things like there's a great farmer at Warren Creek Farm. They do local beans, a whole big variety of beans, but it's gonna be limited how much we're gonna be able to get from that. So we are gonna have to get certain things that are gonna come have to come from a distance. Our buying policy is going to be that, you know, local and organic is gonna take precedence. And we have a rating system set up where we have a number of different factors of, um, things like local, organic, sustainable, fair trade, and each of those things will be assigned a point system, and we'll have a minimum number of points. So in other words, if something you know has a few factors but doesn't have a few of the other factors, depending on how many points, it, it's how we're going to rate our buying system. Is that making any sense? Sorry. No, that makes sense. But yeah, I don't actually think, and especially in this area, I mean, I eat pretty much I'd say 99.9% .9 of my diet is organic and it's doable and it's not that hard. I think what it is is shifting the way that you think about food. Through this video I hope it's become abundantly clear of what the Humboldt Student Food Collective is. It's now more than an idea, it's, it's something tangible and it's become this through the people who support it people who have put their you know, sweat, tears, and time into building something greater than themselves to bringing something better to the Humboldt State campus. And in so doing, they've you know, gained a lot of momentum as of right now. They have $1,500 in grant money, but they need support. They need people like you to join them, to rally together upon the greatest rallying point that humans ever know, which is food itself. So please, in any way you can, bring support to the Humboldt Student Food Collective. They'll need you. Thank you. One, one coca full basket. Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain <laughs> that meaning? It's just, uh, you just, it's an accumulation of things. You, whatever you have, you start with what you have, and, but you don't give up. You, you, okay, this is a tiny little bush of mint, but in there, there is hope. This yeah. is just my perfect, um, let's say um, 
let's use this as an hypothesis, but it's more than hypothesis, it's real. Okay. Um, I, my hope is in those green leaves. Yeah. It's only a few, but by nurturing this tiny amount of green leaves amongst this, these overwhelming dry ones, something good will come out of it. Yeah. So it's just don't give up on the little things that you have. Nourish them and get as much one thing and two things as you can and strive together to build something big out of it.